Hey there. Hey. Hello. Hey. Would it be okay if I just read to you for a little bit? Just a little bit before going to sleep tonight? Yeah? Wonderful. That makes me happy to hear. Because I like reading. And I hope you like this book. I have this book called Money and the Law of Attraction. Learning to Attract Wealth, Health, and Happiness by Esther and Jerry Hooks. I hope you enjoy. My universe is positively and negatively balanced. So you are the creator of your experience. Or you could say that you are the attractor of your experience. Creating is not about identifying something wanted and then going after it and capturing it. Creating is about focusing upon the subject of desire, tuning your thoughts more precisely to the aspects of the subject that you would like to experience, but therefore allowing the law of attraction to bring it to you. Whether you are remembering something from the past, imagining something from the future, or observing something from your now, you are offering thought vibrations that the law of attraction is responding to. You may refer to your thoughts as desires or beliefs. A belief is only a thought you continue to think, but whatever you are going and you're giving your attention to is establishing your point of attraction. Because every subject is actually two subjects. What is wanted and the lack of what is wanted. It is possible to believe that you are positively focused when in fact you are negatively focused. People may say, I want more money but what they are actually focused upon is the fact that they do not have as much money as they need. Most people talk most often about their desire to be healthy when they are feeling sick. In other words, their attention to what they do not want is what is prompting their remarks about what they do want. But in the majority of cases, even though they may be speaking words that seem to indicate that they are focused upon their desire, they are not. It is only by consciously recognizing how you are feeling while you are speaking that you really know if you are positively or negatively attracting. And while you may not see immediate evidence of what you are in the process of attracting, whatever you are thinking about is amassing matching thoughts, vibrations, and energy. And eventually, the evidence of your attraction will be obvious. My universe responds to my attention to... Most people believe, or want to believe, that everything in the universe responds to their words in the same way that other people around them can sometimes be trained to behave. When you tell someone, yes, come to me, you expect them to come. When you say, no, go away from me, you expect them to go. But you live in an attraction-based universe, an inclusion-based universe, which simply means there is no such thing as no. When you give your attention to something wanted, and you say, yes, come to me, you include it into your vibration and the law of attraction begins the process of bringing it. But when you look at something unwanted, you say, No, I do not want you. Go away. The universe brings that also. Your attention to it, and therefore your vibrational alignment with it, is what is causing the response, not your words. And so, as you say, perfect health, I seek you. I want you. I bask in the idea of perfect health. Perfect health. You are attracting health. 
but as you say, sickness, I do not want you. You are attracting sickness. As you say, no, no, no. It is coming closer and closer and closer. Because the more you struggle against something that you do not want, the more engulfed in it you become. People often believe that once they find their perfect mate, or achieve their perfect body weight, or accumulate enough money, and once and for all, they will find the happiness that they seek. But nowhere is there a little corner of something where only positive exists. The perfect balance of the universe says that positive and negative, wanted and unwanted, exists in all particles of the universe. When you, as the creator, the chooser, the definer, the decider, look for the positive aspect, it becomes what you live in all aspects of your life. You do not have to wait around for the perfect thing to show itself to you so that you can then have a positive response to it. Instead, you positively train your thoughts and vibration, and then you become the attractor of it, or the creator of it. We would encourage you to begin each day with this statement. Today, no matter where I go, no matter what I am doing, and no matter who I am doing it with, it is my dominant intent to look for what I am wanting to see. Remember, when you awaken in the morning, you are reborn. While you have slumbered, all attraction has stopped. The sequestering effect for a few hours of sleep, where your consciousness is no longer attracting, gives you a refreshing new beginning. And so, unless you wake up in the morning and begin regurgitating what the troubled day you had before, it will not trouble you in your new day, in your new birth, in your new beginning. Decisions to feel good attract good feelings. Are you doing okay? Yeah. some good tea. Tea is always so good before sleep. Helps you relax. A woman said to us, I recently found out that I'm going to be attending three or four holiday parties. And as soon as I heard that, I started thinking, oh, Mary's going to be here. She's going to be gorgeous. I started immediately comparing myself to other people. I'd like to stop doing that and feel good about me and just enjoy the parties no matter who's there. Could you help me apply the process of pivoting and positive aspects regarding my self-consciousness? I really don't even want to attend these parties. We explained, while your feeling of self-consciousness is amplified as you consider your attendance of these parties, neither the party nor Mary is the reason for your discomfort. It often seems complicated to sort out your relationships with other people. When you're tracing the beginning of these feelings back into your childhood, but there is no value in doing that. You have the ability, from right where you stand, to find positive aspects or negative aspects, to think of the wanted or unwanted, and whatever you begin the process right now, or several days before you attend your first party, or whether you wait until you are at the party, the work is the same. Look for things that feel good when you focus upon them, because you have more control over what is activated in your own mind. It is usually much easier to find the positive aspect of a situation before you are standing right in the middle of it. If you do imagine the situation as you want it to be, and you do practice your positive response, 
to the upcoming situation. Then you are at the party. You witness the control that you set in motion days before. You cannot feel good and bad at the same time. You cannot focus upon unwanted and unwanted and unwanted and unwanted at the same time. If you have trained your thoughts to what you consider to be good or wanted before you arrive at the party, the law of attraction will deliver to you things that feel good and are wanted. It really is as simple as that. If you want to feel different at these upcoming parties, and you have felt at parties in previous years, you must begin telling a different story. The story you've been telling goes something like this. I'm only invited to these parties because of my relationship with my mate. It really isn't important to anyone that I be there. I'm not really a part of his work environment, and I don't really understand most of the things that they're interested in. I'm an outsider. Mary doesn't feel like an outsider like I do. Her confidence is obvious in the way she dresses and carries herself. I always feel less attractive, less smart, less everything when I'm near Mary. I hate feeling like this. I wish I didn't have to go. Here is an example of an attempt at a better feeling story. My mate is well respected at his firm. It's nice that his company occasionally provides an opportunity for people who work there to include their spouses and to get to know one another. No one there expects me to be up to speed with the inner workings of that environment. In fact, this will be a party where they probably enjoy thinking about other things rather than their work. Life is much larger than what happens at my husband's office, and since I'm there, never there, I may very well appear to be a breath of fresh air to many of them, because I'm not bogged down in the things they're troubled about. Mary seems light and friendly. She's clearly not bogged down in the office politics or problems. It's fun to watch her. She's interesting. I wonder where she buys her clothing. There are very pretty things that she wears. You see, it is not necessarily that you sort out every insecurity that you have ever felt and use this office party as a means to solve it. It is find something positive to focus upon and feel the benefit of having done so, and in time, Mary will be a non-issue, or maybe even a friend. But in any case, it is your decision to make, and your vibrational practice to make it so. How are you liking this book so far? Is it good? Do you like the law of attraction? How can I not feel their pain? Our friend Jerry asked us, Our friend Jerry asked us, it seems to me that the majority of my discomfort is felt because I'm observing others who are in pain. How can I use the pivoting process to not feel pain about their pain? He explained, Whatever the subject of your attention, it contains things you want to see as well as things that you do not want to see. The pain you are feeling is not because the person you are observing is in pain. Your pain is because you have chosen to look at an aspect of them that causes you to feel pain. There is a big difference. Of course, if the person were not feeling pain, but were instead joyful, it would be easier for you to feel joyful. But you must not rely on the conditions changing in order to control the way you feel. You must improve your ability to focus positively regarding of the condition. And to do that, it helps to remember that every subject has wanted and unwanted within it. 
and that, if you are deliberate, you can find something that feels better. Of course, it is easier just to observe something that is right before your eyes than it is deliberately. Search for things that you would prefer to see. However, when it really matters to you that you feel good, you will be less willing to merely lazily or sloppily observe for your desire to feel good will inspire greater willingness to look for positive aspects. Also, the more often you do look for good things to focus upon, the more of those kinds of good feelings, feeling things the law of attraction will bring to you, until in time you will be so positively oriented that you will simply will not notice the things that don't match your positive orientation. A mother once said to us, in response to our advertise, ad, her advising her to ignore her son's problems, but won't he feel like I've abandoned him? Shouldn't I be there for him? We explained to her that there is no abandonment in focusing upon the positive aspects of her son's life. And there is powerful value in abandoning any thoughts that, you, that do not feel good when you think them. We said, you never help anyone by being their sounding board for problems or complaints. By holding an image of improvement in your son's life, you help him move towards that. Be there for him. Call him there to a better feeling place. When it is deliberate intention to feel good, and you really care about how you feel, you will find more and more thoughts about more and more subjects that do feel good, and then you will be better prepared to interfere, to interface with others who could be feeling good or bad, because if you desire to feel good, you will have prepared your experience with others with whom you will be interacting. And then it will be much easier for you to focus positively about their situation, no matter what sort of mess they are in. But if you have not been tending to your own vibration, and you have not been consistently holding yourself in good feeling thoughts and vibrations, then you may be swept into their situation, and then you may very well feel discomfort. We just want to emphasize that you are not feeling their pain caused by their situation, but instead you are feeling your own pain brought upon by your own thinking. There is a great control in that knowledge, and in fact, true freedom. When you discover that you can control the way you feel because you can control the thoughts you think, then you are free to joyously move about your planet. But when you believe that the way you feel is dependent upon the behavior or situations of others, and also understand that you have no control over those behaviors or situations, you do not feel free. That, in fact, was the pain we were describing. How are you doing? You getting a little sleepy? Let's see, but let's read one more section, okay? My sympathy is of no value to anyone. Jerry said to us, when I take my attention off of those who are in trouble, I'll feel good. But still, that doesn't help them feel better. In other words, I haven't solved the problem. I'm just avoiding the problem. We replied, if you do not focus upon their problem, you can continue to feel good but they will still have the problem. That is true at first, but if you do focus upon their problem, you feel bad, they continue to feel bad, and they still have the problem. And if you continue to focus on their problem, you will have the problem too in time. However, if you do not focus upon their problem, but instead try to imagine their solution or positive outcome, you feel good. 
and there is then the possibility of your influencing them to do more positive thoughts and outcomes. In simple terms, you are never of value to another and you never offer a solution when you are feeling negative emotion. Because the presence of negative emotion within you means you are focused upon the lack of what is wanted rather than what is wanted. So if someone is having a bad experience and they come into your awareness with a powerful wind of negativity wrapped around them, if you have not already deliberately achieved your alignment with feeling good, you may be swept into their negativity. You may become part of their chain of pain. And you, they, and you may very well pass your discomfort on to another, who will then pass it on to another, and so on. But if you have deliberately, if you have been deliberately setting the tone of your day by putting your head on your pillow each night and saying, tonight as I sleep, all attraction will stop, which means tomorrow I will have a new beginning. And tomorrow I will look for what I am wanting to see because I want to feel good. Because feeling good is the most important thing. As you awaken in the morning, you will be upon a fresh path, bringing no negativity from the day before. And then as you walk into a room and you see someone with pain coming towards you, as this person comes with his or her pain, you do not become a part of it, but instead you provide a better example of happiness for that which you feel is what you radiate. Now, it is not likely that just because you remain happy, others will immediately join you in your happiness. In fact, when there is a great disparity between the way you are feeling and the way others are feeling, you will have a difficult time relating to one another. But in time, if you maintain your positive vibrational stance, they will either join you in your positive place, or they will vibrate right out of your experience. The only way unhappy people can stay in your experience is by your continuing attention to them. If you and two other people were walking